Good morning, Transformers, and praise the name of the Lord. I trust that you're doing well, that the Lord has taken good care of us, and that we are learning day by day. There's no end to learning. And today I want us to look at another aspect in Luke 4 from verse number 18 concerning he came to heal the broken hearted. And I want us to understand that to some of us there are issues that have happened in our lives that have broken our hearts. And the heart issues and heart wounds are very deep because they cut in a place that no one will see. Sometimes it's the things that have happened to you, shameful things in your life, things that have been said to you that affect you from the inside. It's an internal issue. That is why when the Bible says that God do your heart with all diligence because out of it comes the issues of life. That sometimes the brokenness of our hearts is the things that we have harbored. We've not been able to progress or to move. They've been deep. They've cut in a certain way that you, you can be walking with a bleeding wound but you will not be able to see. But the Lord is faithful and just that is reaching out to us even um, as we put on good smiles in the physical realm that he would want us to know that he's concerned about that heart issue that is disturbing you, that which is weighing you down, that which is depressing you, that which is hidden within you, something that was said and you've carried it with weight, something that was spoken by a relevant person and you don't know what to do with it. But also there are wounds that just happen because of external forces that come, things that we have no control over. And there's a beautiful story that I picked from the book of Luke chapter number 10, uh, from verse number 30. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he, saw, when he was at the, at, at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him and whatsoever you spend more. When I come again, I will repay you. Which now of this do you think was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? I, don't, um, I, I just want us to concentrate on what happened to this man. This is a man who was on a journey, just like we are in a journey in life from point A to point B, one year, another year, doing life. And the Bible says that this man fell on wrong hands, fell on thieves. He never went looking for trouble. He never went wooing problems. He found himself in the journey of life as he was going towards his, de his destination. And he was beaten. They ripped him off of his garment. He, so he was exposed. He was, um, he, he was wounded physically and he was left to the dead. The point that I want us to concentrate on is that he was left almost half dead. It's like there was no hope for him. And maybe the person who attacked him expected him not to make it in life. But then the Bible says there were people who passed by, three categories of people. One of them was a priest, saw him and passed by. And I was looking at sometimes the things that affect our spirits and our souls and our hearts is that sometimes when you are in need, sometimes when you are beaten down, sometimes when you are wounded in any aspect of your life, you are at the mercy of people. You would want someone who can come and pick you up and cause you to rise up again or maybe, maybe get you medication or maybe get you to a solution where you can be helped. But then the Bible says that when the priest, the person who was meant to come and take care of him, the person who would have been um, in, in, in the society and authority who can come and carry the burden of this guy, he was not able to do that, and so he just passed by passed and went. And could there be times in our lives when we have expectations towards certain people who need to help us? Someone that you're looking up to, a significant person who is supposed to help you from point A to point B. Someone who is supposed to carry you through, someone who is supposed to lead you on, someone who is supposed to see your nakedness and your shame and cover you. Someone who is supposed to mend and bind your wounds so that you may make it. That whoever that meant to finish you and left you half dead, that it will not come to pass because someone else came and picked you up. 
So the priest passed by, the person in the robe, the man of the cloth, passed by and never addressed that issue. And maybe I could be talking to such a person in our midst today that you have been in a space where you have not been able to progress because there is a wound that was caused by somebody else, another person that has kept you in a place where you feel like you are half dead. That you are, you are in a space where the person who was supposed to pick you up passed you by and you are left and you are wondering, maybe you don't even have the energy or the voice to scream out for help from them, but they saw you, they looked, but then they looked aside and passed by. They went with their business and you are crawling in your blood and you don't know what to do with yourself. There's a solution for you today that the Lord is able to send you help even from strange quarters for the sake of your deliverance. And the Bible says that even as he continued, there was a Levite, there was the people who are set apart by God, people who are supposed to be solution givers, people who are meant to be the ones who are carrying the mantle of God. He came and passed by, looked at this wounded man and just went. And this is so much us in our nature, that sometimes we just look at people, we are meant to help them, we could at least even have participated in their healing, but we looked at them and then we bypassed them and went on. Because maybe sometimes it is too much of work to come to where you are and start nursing your wounds. It's too much of work to wait for you to heal, for you to rise up again. It is even more expensive because when I take you in, it means that I'm taking up the responsibility. And maybe to some of us, when we looked at you, we thought you're going to die. So I don't want you to die in my hands. So I keep moving and I keep moving. But there's a solution in God. The Bible says, but there was a Samaritan. These were not people of the household of the Israelites. These were half caste. These were people from other nationalities who mingled with the Israelites. So they were not expected to be able to be part of the, the grace that was supposed to be released upon the, the Jews. But the Bible says, Jesus is saying, this is the right kind of a neighbor. This is the right kind of a person that you need in your space. And the person who was asking the question to Jesus before Jesus came to ask him, he was asking, who is my neighbor? Because Jesus was telling him, you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. So he's asking, who is my neighbor? And then Jesus, by answering, gave him this example, that this neighbor is the person who comes and picks you up. And to some of us, the help that we need is in total strangers, that the neighbor is not the person that you know, it's not the person that you can identify with, maybe from your dialect or maybe someone from your social space or someone from your network. Sometimes it is strangers who will come and be able to build you up. And the Bible says that the Samaritan came and looked at him. He got off his animal or his donkey. He came and looked at this man. He did not care about the tribe. He did not care about who, who had wounded him. He covered him and picked him and took him upon his donkey and rode with him. My prayer for us is for the sake of the word of God coming to pass, that he came to mend the brokenhearted, that there are people that he's going to use, even as we speak the word, that sometimes God will use resources in men. God will use men to come into your space, come and pick you up. Some of them are total strangers. They're not people of our family. Sometimes it's not even people of your faith. And someone who is a good neighbor, someone who loves you as a neighbor, will come to your space and pick you up, will come and cause you to be in a space where you will get the help that you need. I can imagine in the state of the wounded man, he did not even know this stranger. The stranger did not even stay long enough for him to take the details of his ID. He was just the neighbor, the God kind of neighbor, who was sent to be able to help this man to get to his destination. And the Bible says that he rode with this man, took him to an inn, took him to a place where he would be taken care of, paid the money, his own money, to a stranger. And then he said, you go tend him, use wine and use oil, let him be completely healed, mend every wound, let the skin be restored, let the inner skin be restored, let this man heal completely. And in case you will spend more than what I've given unto you. So there was provision of more than enough. That he said, I'm giving you this amount that I have for you to take care of this man in the place of healing. But in case you will need more, in case you will spend more, just know that I am, I am, you are loaning me, I will come and repay back. And I was just looking at the power that is in God concerning the place that is called us to unite and to be able to be in sync with his word. That I'm supposed to carry the burden of another person, not because I know them, not because there's anything that they're going to benefit from me, but I'm willing to go out of my way. And this is so the character of Jesus, that he came out of his way. He left his throne, he left his grace, he, he left the place of 
operation and came and took our place. He came for the sake of the brokenhearted. He came for the sake of the wounded. He came and stood in the gap. He came and caused us to be able to be healed and to be restored back. You know, when you're going through a, a personal uh, internal issue, most people will not understand. They will look at you, they don't understand why you are gloomy, they don't understand why you aren't smiling anymore, but maybe there's something that is eating the inside of you that you cannot laugh again, you cannot be joyous again, you cannot be able to operate in the way God wants you to operate. But he has sent his wife. The anointing, when he was told you were going to use wine and going to use oil, it is the anointing of God that causes there to be total healing. Oil heals and binds. Wine heals and binds. This resurrection that comes from within, that is able to mend your broken pieces and cause you to stand up again. My prayer for us today is that may those wounds that are in our hearts be healed in the name of Jesus. But I was looking as we go back to the, to the priest, and I was looking at the priest who bypassed this man. And I know it could relate with the Pharisees and the leaders of the, of the synagogue who were are, who are wearing robes, but they were not involved in the nitty gritty details of people. They were not concerned about what the, the people are going through in, a, in an intimate way. But in my perspective, I'm also looking at um, the wounds that we incur, even in the place that we're supposed to be helped. I call them church wounds, that sometimes it is the wounds that we have incurred in the place where we thought we could get help. The place that you thought you could be spiritually nourished, but something happened in the midst of you being there, in the, in the service, in the work of God. Something happened and you were wounded and you were left. Maybe you were expecting that when you come and you connect with this community and this society, you could receive help. But because of the state that you are in, maybe you came with a wound and you were hoping that someone would nurse your wound, but someone bypassed you. So you have stuck your life, you stopped serving because of the wound that you received in the same place that you're supposed to get healed. My prayer for you is that Jesus, the owner of the church, the head of the church, the lead of the altar, may he reach out to you by his grace and heal you. And you see, sometimes people have stopped serving because they've gone through much pain in the place of serving because they did not know where else to go. And most of the times when we are coming into the ministry, we come with expectations. We come knowing that when I come in, people are going to receive me and I'm going to be nursed and I'm going to be healed immediately. And the disappointing part is that sometimes when you get to this place and you do not get what you are expecting, either you lose it, either you die spiritually, either you go and you go back to the world where you came from and you start sinning, or you just pack your life and you sit, you are among people but far away from people. There's a disconnect because your heart is bleeding. My prayer is that you will bring your bleeding heart into the presence of God, where the healing balm of Gilead, where the oil of joy will water your heart again, that you can be able to be restored back again and serve God again, that your bleeding heart can be mended again into the broken, from the brokenness to the total healing and wholesomeness by the anointing of God and by the, the, the oil of God, that you can be able to be restored back to where you ought to be. You see, the reason why this man was on a journey is that we are all in a journey in life and we are progressing day by day. And there are things that will happen on our way even as we walk. However much that we have purpose to work, to work together with the other saints in the household of God, they, we need to understand there are things that will happen to our lives that will wound us. The Bible says they were robbers. In the journey, there are people who are going to come and attack you. There are people who have nothing to lose who will taint you and they will, they will want to massacre even your name and they will want to put you in a place where you are vulnerable and some of them even looking for a way that you will be dead. But by the mercy of God, this man who was left half dead did not die. And I want to encourage you that even if you are wounded and you thought that you would get help in a certain space and you did not get it, there's another option. The priest may pass you by, the Levite may pass you by, but the Lord has many options of how to reach out to you. The Samaritan was a person who was used of God to come and pick up this man who is nameless and take him to a place and be able to invest on his behalf and pay the cost of his healing. But more so, concerning Jesus, that he came and paid the cost for you to receive healing. It does not glorify God when you are wounded and you are stuck in your wound, when you are wallowing in pain in your heart because of things that happen. But I can tell you, you may never catch up with the priest who passed you by. You may never sit with the Levite who passed, passed you by. You may never even meet the Samaritan who paid your bill. But you can come and surrender your pain to Jesus. For the reason of you still being alive and still being in the agenda of God, you will go through pain and persecutions in this life. But you need to refuse to be broken. You, re you need to refuse to stay where you are. The same place of you, your, your pain 
does not mean that that is the defining moment of your life. That the Lord by His grace is reaching out to somebody today who's been wounded and bruised and is saying, I want to reach out to your heart and heal you. I want to reach out to the brokenness of your spirit and heal you. I am willing that you may stand up again. There is a chance for you. If you are left and you did not die, there is hope for you that you can finish up well, that you can come back and you can be restored and you can be healed and you can be resuscitated again and you can become the person that God wants you to become. My prayer for you today is that may you receive the healing. May you receive the healing from the people that wounded you, that were meant to support you. They were meant to carry you through. They were meant, they had the solution. I want you to understand the ultimate solution is in God and God has very many options in men that is able to cause anyone to come and lead you to the place of your healing. It's going to cause anyone who has the donkey that you need to carry you to your destiny. Allow me to pray over you today that if you're here and you're bleeding and you say, woman of God, you do not understand the depth of the cut and I don't have to understand, but there is one who reigns in this altar. There's one who is in this platform. There's one who is Jesus, who is concerned about every pain of your life, the pains of your heart, the pains of your spirit, even the wounds in your soul, the heart that is ruptured in so many pieces that you don't think you will make it. The Lord is willing. Father God, I commend your people with the wounds and the pains and the hearts of where they've come from and the people who attacked them, even people that we will never know the things that were robbed away from us, the, the raiments and the garments that covered us, the place that we have been thrown into the ocean and we have been thrown to the sharks and we don't know what to do with ourselves. Father God, I pray that by your mercy, by your healing grace, by your anointing, may you reach out to these hearts in the name of Jesus. Fathers who are wounded, mothers who are wounded, sons and daughters who are wounded, children who are wounded, spiritual fathers who are wounded, spiritual daughters and sons who are wounded. Lord, I pray as this word penetrates into the hearts of the people, let there be the healing virtue that the brokenhearted will rise up again. Lord, I pray that these people will finish the race. They will get to their destination. Lord, that by any means necessary, as you send us help, I pray, we will be taken into your inn, the place of refuge, the place of Psalms 91, under the pavilion and under the shadow of your wings, where we can be nurtured again. We can watch things happening around, but in the safety of your wings, oh God, we can be able to grow, we can be able to expand, we can be able to continue in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, my Father, God, even in thanksgiving, that you're reminding your people you have already paid the cost for their healing. That by the reason, the reason of going to the cross, you paid the ultimate price for our healing. That we can receive the healing and we can be able to progress. So Lord God, I pray to anyone who came and they have surrendered and they have identified with this wound, oh God. And even with this message, King of all glory, that they're going to come to you knowing that you are the solution that they need. You are the healer. You are the restorer of broken pieces of our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. So Lord, I commend these people before you in the mighty name of Jesus. May you may they receive your healing in Jesus' name. May they receive your restoration in the name of Jesus. And Lord, even as they surrender their wounds to you and their pains and their heartaches, may they go back home in peace and joy because they have encountered with the healing power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to pray that you're going to receive your healing. You still have an assignment so long as you're counted among the living. Regardless of who bypassed you, focus on what Jesus has done. Thank God for the people that God has brought you away, but let your focus be on Jesus, not even on the people who helped you. But just know there's a solution for you. There's a place of refuge that the Lord is calling us into. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. May your security be in that you have encountered the in of God where the cost has been paid for, that you are healing. When you wake up from that pain, you will know someone paid the cost and that person will be Jesus. And you will focus your direction. You will focus your praises and your songs unto him, him who is able to do that which only him can do and no man can do. So God bless you. Have a healed day. May you be restored and may the same healings trickle down to any other area of your life that needs healing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's meet again tomorrow as we put an end to this on focusing on Jesus. Amen and amen.